funny enough, I wanted to talk a little bit about heart rate from that. I mean, you brought it up about you got to keep your heart rate down to shoot. And I had a question that came in today about zone two training. And they specifically asked about rucking. Is rucking a good path to zone two? Is it worth it? Do you have any, I mean, you're about to do an entire month of rucking. Do you view that as zone two or no? So admittedly, as a coach, I am, I'm very much like a skill coach, right? I can help people learn skills in terms of the methodologies of training zone two, three, four, yada, yada, yada. I am not the person to ask. However, I do have a little bit of expertise on that. If you remember, we interviewed Michael Easter from The Comfort Crisis. Yep. In his book, he talks about, in The Comfort Crisis, he talks all about the scientific benefits of rucking and how it's one of the very few things that you can do that will get you that zone two training, but also strength training at the same time. So, and it's also relatively low impact. Like you're not as long as you're not running with it. It's low impact, low injury, high bang for your buck, so to speak, training wise. So short answer, yes, it could be a great tool to get that zone two time, but not necessarily have to run or use any equipment. It's literally like, like you put weight in the backpack and go for a hike uphill. And it's a really, really easy way to get some great training in. Are you, do you incorporate any zone two into your training or no? It is incorporated into the second sessions that my gym programs for the competitor workouts. I only go in for the one afternoon session. So no, I'm not really doing too much zone two training other than I bike my dogs almost every single day for a few miles. So that's probably zone two training, just yeah. biking them around. But I don't specifically in my training, but if I was trying to compete at a higher level, if I was really trying to get good at fitness, which is not necessarily something that I am still trying to do. I just go to the competitor class for fun and it, I'm happy to get better. I'm, I'm getting yeah. better at fitness on the way. If I was trying to compete at a high level and really increase that engine, then yes, I'd be doing a lot more. So I know people are probably, some people listening are going to wonder like, what is zone two? So there's a formula for this to get it. And there's multiple formulas. The one that I use is like the simplest formula of all, which is you take 220 and you subtract your age. And so if you're 30 years old, as, as an example, which I am not obviously, but if you're 30 years old, that would give you your maximum heart rate. So basically they're saying 220 minus your age is your maximum heart rate. So if you're 30, that means it'd be 190, right? And then you take 70 to 80% of that 190 and it gives you where your zone two heart rate would be. Mm -hmm. So this would work theoretically works in any age group. So I could take that 220 minus 53, multiply it back by 70 to 80%, and that'll give me my max heart rate for zone two and give me a sense of where I should be. So if you're trying to figure out your zone two, that's the easiest way to do it. You can Google it. There's three or four methods, but kind of two that are at least that I'm super familiar with, but this is the one that I use. And it seems to be pretty accurate for me, for whatever that's worth. I'm zone tuning, zone tuning, zone two -ing. Probably twice a week now at yeah. this point. And I'm finding it super beneficial for two reasons. I think one, it is giving me a very, very consistent heart rate. I think that's partly why I'm, when I did that workout we described a little bit ago, why I'm able to keep my heart rate down as low as it is and continue to work. Now it still sucks. Like 135 to 145 is not a crazy low heart rate. So it's still, you're still putting in work, but it's not 150 or 160. And then the second one is, is like these zone two for me are like a minimum of 40 minutes, 40 to 60 minutes. I prefer to go as far out as 60, but you know, 40 is kind of the minimum. And when you do a 40 minute workout, these little 10 minute workouts are super manageable, right. at least, at least mentally. Like yep. I was, I was three rounds in and I mentioned like how my legs were failing, but I'm looking at the clock going, I got four more minutes. <laughs> That's it. I only got to work for four more minutes. And I, I found that to be probably one of the biggest advantages in workouts for me lately, particularly as we've been doing, we're doing superhero summer at my gym. So we do a hero wad every single Friday. And those are typically 30 ish minutes and they're really hard, like really hard workouts. We did Zeus last week and 
you know, even 30 minutes seems really manageable, even when you're in like kind of your hardest state, whether it's lifting or just high heart rate or whatever it is. So, yep. yeah. And that's something that I think most CrossFit gyms as a whole, preparing people for GPP, general physical preparedness, there's a lot of times where we were skewed to those short eight to 15 minute workouts. And they're great and they get, we get a ton of benefit. Like the amount of benefit you get from a high intensity workout at 15 minutes long, it's amazing how much you can get out of that short time, time span. But there definitely is something to be said for actually dedicating time, whether it's your own time or gyms that specifically program it. The issue is most people skip those days when they see, right. hey, we're running at zone two for 40 minutes. Like, nope, right? I'm not going. But it's extremely beneficial. And I mean, essentially all of September, I will be in zone two the whole, the whole time. I will be just hiking and hiking and hiking. And my heart rate, I'm sure will be fluctuating a lot, but it'll be hovering around that like 160 for me. And it's, it's amazing the, the engine that you can build with that low impact, long duration workout. 